Hey guys, Miss Goslingy here. In this video, you're going to learn about black body radiation. By the end of the video, you will be able to qualitatively and quantitatively describe the relationship between temperature and color for stars. So let's go ahead and get started. So um, for IB, your understandings, applications, and skills. Um, by the end of the video, you should be able to understand stellar spectra. Um, and just so you all know, spectra is just the plural for spectrum. Um, and your applications and skills, you should be able to explain how surface temperature may be obtained from a star's spectrum. So we're explaining how temperature is obtained from a spectrum. Um, and I should hopefully not need to remind you for IB when we talk about explaining. That is both qualitative and quantitative. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and get started. So when we look at the night sky, um, when you look at first, star the stars all might kind of appear the same shade of sort of blinky yellow white. Um, but the longer you look at the night sky, the more you, and, and if you look at it through a telescope, you may be able to actually notice that stars appear to be different colors. So this picture is a little bit, um, this, is, this is a picture of the night sky where we're really focusing on some of the different colors we see in stars. So here in the center, we can see that um, one of our stars here looks to be red, while this star um, over here appears far more blue. Um, and many of the other stars in the background may appear a little white or a little bit yellow. Um, now, if you know anything um, about fire, um, you maybe at some point have heard that red fire is cooler than blue. Um, and the same is true for stars. Red stars are cooler than blue stars. Um, so what that means is the, we know of course that red light has a larger wavelength and less energy than blue light. Um, those stars that we see in the night sky that appear red their temperature, when you get to the surface of the, st the star, is also much cooler than the stars that we see that appear to be blue. So let's take a look at why that is. And to truly understand why we see this with stars, we need to understand black body radiation. Um, so a black body is any object that absorbs all radiant energy, so all light that falls on it. Um, this also means that... Um, that surface, that object will emit every single wavelength of light. Now, we might oppose, we might contrast this with something like a hydrogen atom. We know that hydrogen atoms absorb only the wavelengths of light that will allow their photons, um, or sorry, that will allow their electrons to jump from one energy state to the next. Um, and so a hydrogen atom is not a black body because it only absorbs very specific wavelengths of light. Um, black bodies, on the other hand, absorb a lot of different wavelengths, and we tend to model stars as black bodies. Now, I will tell you there's no such thing um, in our universe that we know of as a perfect black body. Um, so stars are actually better classified as extremely efficient gray bodies, um, which is something between a black body and not a black, and not a black body. Um, so gray bodies are things that, are, that absorb and emit most wavelengths of light. Um, but we are going to go ahead and model stars as black bodies. Um, so when we look at black body radiation, um, what we can do is we can graph the intensity um, of, the of a wavelength of light versus the wavelength. Um, so what we're essentially looking at is how frequently is the wavelength that we're measuring on the x-axis um, emitted by that object. And when we do this, what we see is we see this very characteristic curve where we have some sort of a peak at a specific temperature, and then a kind of slow decrease as our wavelengths increase. Um, now, some things I hope you notice here, we have three different temperature stars, um, 5,000 Kelvin, 4,000 Kelvin, and 3,000 Kelvin. And each of these stars, um, you can see, has a very different intensity peak. Um, so if you look at our hottest star, which has, is marked blue because blue is the hottest, um, what we see is we see that our peak is very tight and very high. Um, so we have a very, we, we, we increase in intensity very quickly as wavelength increases. 
and then our, our, we fall off pretty quickly as well. We can oppose this um, with this red peak here, which is a wide um, and much less high curve. Um, the other thing I hope you notice is that as my temperature increases, my wavelength decreases. So we can see that my peak for my blue kind of going down is about 0.5 micrometers or microns. And when we look at the peak for this red, we see that it's much closer to one micrometer. Um, and this is true for all black body radiation. In fact, if we look at our equation over here, what we find is that the maximum wavelength, um, so that's that wavelength at my peak, so here and here and here, is equal to uh, times the surface temperature of the star is equal to 2.9 times 10 to the negative third meters times Kelvin. Um, so what this means is as my temperature increases, so as T increases, we are going to see lambda max decrease. And we can see that in our picture on our graph over to the right. Um, so again, key things to, to look at uh, for black body radiation, we expect to see kind of a skewed Gaussian, a skewed curve. Um, and the, um, the bigger the wavelength, the, the, the cooler the star, the higher, the, the smaller the peak wavelength, the hotter the star. So let's go ahead and take a moment to look at an example. The surface temperature of the star Epsilon Indy is 4600 uh, Kelvin. Determine the peak wavelength of the radiation emitted by Epsilon Indy and draw the variation with wavelength of the intensity of the radiation of Epsilon Indy. So let's go ahead and get started. So I know that lambda max, lambda max times T is equal to 2.9 times 10 to the negative third. So this, and I'm being asked to find peak wavelength, so I'm being asked to find lambda max. So isolating for lambda max, I get lambda max equals 2.9 times 10 to the negative 3 divided by my temperature or 2.9 times 10 to the negative 3 divided by 4600 K. Um, just a reminder, my temperature does need to be in Kelvin. So if you get are given your temperature in Celsius, don't forget to do that unit conversion. Um, so I'm going to, right now, while I'm talking to you, I'm just throwing my answer in the calculator. So I'm doing 2.9 times 10 to the negative third. And I'm going to go ahead and divide that by 4,600. And when I do, I get that my peak wavelength is 6.30 times 10 to the negative seventh meters. Or if I'm feeling fancy, I can write that as 360 nanometers. And there is my answer for part A. Um, so I think this one is pretty straightforward. Part B is a little less so. So this asks you to draw the variation with wavelength on the intensity of the radiation of epsilon indy. And I think when I see this, my brain thinks, so you want me to draw a picture? I don't fully know. But whenever you see the word variation, the word that should come to your mind is graph. So when I ask for variation, when, when I'm asking you to, when you're asked to draw variation, that usually means draw me a graph showing the relationship between these two different variables. So here we're looking at wavelength and intensity. Wavelength, of course, is measured in meters. And what I want to see is I want to draw, I want to see that you drew some sort of a black body radiation curve. Um, mine is a little messy here, and so I'm going to go ahead and just take a moment and erase it. Um, because what I want to see is I want to see that kind of quick rise and slightly slower fall. Um, I also want to show that lambda max is at 6.3 times 10 to the negative seventh. Um, so I'm showing that I understand that that peak is the peak intensity that I found in A. Now, before we finish, I do want to just really quickly mention, um, we've talked about how we can use surface temperature to find wavelength. Um, sometimes we can't uh, measure wavelength as specifically as we would like, um, sorry, as precisely as we, we, we would like. Um, and so one thing we also do is we do classify stars into letters. Um, so you can see on here stellar class classification by temperature and by letter. Um, what you'll see is my temperature is decreasing as I go from type O stars to type M stars. 
and my colors are going from blue all the way down to like kind of a reddish orangish color. Um, so take a look at this. Um, I don't expect you to memorize it, but it is, I think, useful to know that sometimes we classify stars by O, B, A, F, G, K, and M instead of by sim um, versus and, and by their different colors um, versus simply separately calculating um, lambda max or T for each star that we can see in the night sky. Um, so with that, that brings us to our takeaways. Um, so peak wavelength and temperature are inversely proportional. So again, that's peak wavelength and temperature. They are inversely proportional. Um, we can use Wien's law to determine the surface temperature of a star. And when I say Wien's law, um, that is my lambda max T equation. Um, so um, the official name for that equation is Wien's law. Um, so you may see it referred to that way as well. Um, and finally, we can classify stars into spectral classes by their color and by their temperature. So there you have it, guys. That is everything I have for you on black body ra radiation. Um, best of luck um, and happy solving.